Event photographers, today we're gonna to take a look at another one of my jobs. This is for the Vanity Fair Hollywood Calling premiere party at the Annenberg Space for Photography. Let's get right into it. I wanna show you guys some of my work. I will talk about my workflow, uh, what my intent is behind each shot. We'll talk settings, and then we will also talk about a unique challenge I faced doing this job. Okay, so rather than show you guys in Lightroom all of my work, what I'm gonna do instead is watch it as a slideshow along with you guys. This job was broken down into two sections. The first was covering the step and repeat. There was actually a second photographer there that was also a house photographer who actually got me this gig. And he was covering all the roaming photography stuff while I was covering this step and repeat. You guys have probably seen my past videos where I talk about how to cover a step and repeat. I give tips, advice, settings, etc. This is a different ball game. I know that sounds a little crazy, like why would it be so different? It's not because there, there are celebrities. That makes no difference. The difference here is that I was photographing a step and repeat with about 15 other photographers. We had Getty photographers. Um, we had Vanity Fair photographers. And then you name it. And they're all yelling and screaming for each person's attention, which changes the game quite a bit. Uh, if you've ever seen one of these, everyone has a flash bracket. Often they're directing their flash straight forward. They're not bouncing through a diffuser or anything like that. They're just firing off as many shots as they possibly can because they absolutely need to make sure they get the shot. Me, for the type of work I'm normally doing, I'm basically going for quality over quantity. I take my time. Um, obviously, it doesn't take me very long, but not having any competition, and I don't mean competition like they're working against me, just meaning competition for attention. Um, it's a different game. So it was freezing, and basically I was just waiting for each celebrity to arrive. Uh, hopefully you guys will recognize them. Um, I honestly didn't know a good a good portion. Obviously, Caitlyn Jenner, uh, Sharon Stone. There were several photographers that actually had work at this job, at the, you know, the show. Um, we had the editor of Vanity Fair, I think, was there, etc. And you guys can see, you know... Honestly, I, Charlize Theron was there for like a, less than 30 seconds. She blazed through. The fact that I was able to even get a shot was not, you know, I'm happy to say I got it. Uh, she just walked right through. She's done this before and she didn't want to be doing it, it seemed like. Uh, really good. Or, you know, some actors, they know the drill and they'll make sure they go down the line, look at each camera. All right, so we're now in the candid portion, the roaming photography part of the job, which I love. Uh, you guys might recognize some of these images because I did a video on how I use my 85 millimeter to cover events and I used some of the work from this job. So these, a series you just saw, this candid right here, that's from, uh, that actor is in Lost, one of my favorite TV shows. Um, here we see a moment, and then immediately I saw another moment, and I grabbed that too. You can't be afraid to do that. Also, another thing I'll do is I'll wait for someone to actually notice me. So I'll get the candid, and then sometimes I wait for them to notice me. I grab that moment and then move on. Here we have a photo booth where I shot a lot of portraits, candids, but also these posed portraits. The lighting was set up. It was like everything was done for me. And so being one of only two photographers, actually, I think there was a third um, that were actually photographing the event, not just the step and repeat. I was able to approach people and grab those portraits. One thing uh, I want to talk about is photographing your client or not photographing your client. Sometimes your client is the organizer and they don't want photos of themselves or they don't need it. Uh, the way I do things is I do pay special attention to the VIPs, the notable people, uh, but I do not discriminate. If I see a big laugh, a big smile, I'm drawn to it. I'm capturing that shot. I worry sometimes that a client may think I'm playing favorites. <laughs> I don't. Some people are the life of the party. They're going to get more shots. That's just how it is. If you're shooting with intention, you're going to end up photographing certain people more than others. That said, I do my best to grab a shot of every single person at an event it's not always reasonable you can't always do that but it is my intention i do try but it's a combination of trying to get everyone i can 
sometimes I wait around, but not too long. I don't wait for someone to do something interesting too long because I don't want to miss other shots. Uh, these were shot with my 135 millimeter lens, so you can see that more shallow depth of field. Uh, it's really important to learn how to drag your shutter so you can open up that ambient light and make your images look more lively. You don't want the images to look like they're in a black hole. Uh, here you're seeing a lot of a lot of the techniques I discussed in how I shoot candids. I'll link that. Um, but basically, I, I do a lot of different techniques to make my candids feel more candid, to make them look more natural, more kind of not snapshotty, but I, I employ different compositional techniques from shooting looser and less clinical to obscuring parts of my shots, shooting over the shoulder, framing techniques, etc. I would really recommend watching that video. I think it's one of the most important videos I've done. Uh, it hasn't gotten a lot of views, but I think the keywords just weren't there. So here, just your standard shot. That shot right there, I didn't love, but it's a good moment. It was the best I could do from where I was standing. I saw a laugh. I quickly went to grab it. Here is a 135 millimeter shot. Um, I, you're going to run into trouble when you shoot with a lens like that because you might have to do group shots. Your, alter, your option is you back up if you can. Um, you gra you t let them know, hey, yeah, I'm willing to grab this shot. Uh, can you guys squeeze in real tight? And then I'll run and grab another lens later and then find them again and get, get it done properly. Um, the reason I'm sharing these photos is because event photography doesn't have to be one thing. I think a lot of people, when they think event photography, they think photographer walking around and getting posed portraits of groups of people. Um, but why not have some fun? Why not, if someone wants to work with you and shoot some creative portraits, do it. These, this series of portraits took about a minute or two. It really didn't take very long. And I was able to kind of do something more interesting. And if nothing else, I created some good work um, for my portfolio. And there's nothing wrong with using a job to build up on your portfolio. So even if a client isn't specifically asking you to do something go the extra mile because they may actually end up appreciating it maybe they didn't think about it or maybe you know at worst you build your portfolio up and you can show the kind of work you want to be doing on your portfolio all right guys that's it for today i kind of had to speak really quickly because i wanted to go with the slideshow um i really appreciate you guys watching let me know what you think i do these videos for you guys i remember what it was like when i first started out as a photographer i had no template to follow and so I try to support photographers starting out or photographers bridging into event photography I want to make content that you guys actually find valuable so feedback is welcome I'm listening um, if you guys want to support the channel please consider checking out my patreon I think that's the best way uh, I don't make money from YouTube, really. I make about $70 a month, but it takes so much time. And juggling photography, which is my income, teaching photography, which is a side thing, and then making these videos, it's not easy. So I appreciate your support.